All right, we're just going to jump right into it. <laughs> Greetings. Once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, I greet you in that name that is above every other name at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, He is Lord and He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, and we have our being. Yeah, I... Um, <laughs> Just going straight for it today, because uh, you gotta, gotta gotta get gotta get these words out where we get the chance. Because um, there's so much happening right now, so many things moving and flowing, and and God is God is moving right now. God is for His people. God is moving with and through His people. This is an incredible time where His Spirit is being poured out upon all flesh. And for those that are in alignment with the Spirit of God, they are seeing that manifestation and that free flow of, uh, of His Spirit through them. And it's just an overflowing of His Spirit in and through them in an incredible and a powerful way. And for those that are misaligned with the Spirit of God, as God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh, it's causing them to go nuts. So it's causing them to manifest. It's causing them to make... Uh, just really bad moves to reveal who they are. It's causing them to make um, and to make moves and to have to come out of the darkness to try to block the light. And yet, in their attempt to try to block the light, uh, they themselves expose what's been hiding in the darkness all the time. So all of this is taking place. All of this is going on. All of this is is part and parcel of the time if you would, even though time is an illusion, but the time that we are living in, and space and time no longer, uh, the construct of that no longer exists, because the uh, malleable reality that we live in, that we consider and we call time, that in and of itself is being brought into question. As physicists and as scientists look at it, the more that they know, the more they realize they don't know. And the more they realize that what they thought they knew, they don't know in the first place at all. So, all that to say is that God is in control, and this whole thing that's going on is His. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So this is all His thing, His bat, His ball, His will, His plan, His purpose. All of it is Him. And we, in Him, we live and we move and we have our being. So it's all Him, it's all about Him, and... He's over it all, and that's and, and we move and, and flow with that, and we move and flow in Him. So the whole thing is it's it's good, <laughs> it's fine. Everything is what He wants it to be, and as we just overflow with His Spirit, as we're in alignment with His Spirit, as we move forward in the things of His Spirit, God is accomplishing His purpose. His kingdom is coming. His will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And so it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing place to be. So now, for us, you know, we, I think recently we were talking about the keys, and I, I just, that's been just resonating with me so much because of the power of, of moving in what you have in Christ, the power of moving and using the keys. Because Jesus is the door, um, and He's given us the keys, and in using those keys, you shift to and you can move through reality. Now, if you're in prison, you don't have the key. If you're in prison, you don't have the key, so you're stuck in that room. You're stuck in that construct. Whatever that construct is, you don't have the keys to get out. You don't know where the door is. Even if you don't know, even, even if you do know the door, you can't go through it. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know, you, once, you, once you have that, once you have that unlocking space, and once God has brought this reality within your being, within yourself, now you can move forward... <laughs> in that truth. Now you can move forward in that reality. So, right now is an incredible, 
incredible time and space to be in. It's not an easy time and space to be in, but it's simple. You know, in, in the complexities of what the life that we live here can become, you've got to keep it simple. God kept it simple. For His creation, it is simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Just just love on God and do that thing which He gives you to do. You know, I, I we've talked about it before. Um, we talked about it before in other shows. I uh, recently heard my buddy Zeph talking about it and reiterating it. Please, you guys, keep it simple and do that simple thing that God gives you to do. So often, it's just that simple thing that God puts in front of us to do that is that in just doing that thing you will see the result and the large scale ramifications sometimes of just following a very simple instruction you know I think back in my own life of a few times um, just one that comes to mind right now I remember one time I was going to pray I was about to go in to go and pray in the morning and God told me to get up and to go somewhere now, you know, if I was just being religious, and oh, okay, this is this is my prayer time. This is the time that I go before the Lord, and we spend time in sweet communion. Now, I mean, if <laughs> if I was being religious, I, then I would have just ignored God's voice and instruction telling me to go somewhere. But He told me to go somewhere. And uh, in the process of going to the place that he wanted me to go, I ended up meeting two people that would be instrumental in a number of future things that would end up happening just based on that one meeting of those two people that morning. And in fact, there's things I'm involved with to this very day. There's areas of work and interaction and impact I'm involved with to this very day that are a result of meeting two people uh, 17 years ago. Now, I just, that one just got brought that back to mind because just of a case in point. See, see, religion will strip you of your ability to hear the voice of God because religion And dead religion in and of itself is a means of controlling the masses. It's a means of conformity. And in conformity, if if you're being conformed to the systems of men, you now have lost your ability to hear the voice of God. If you are being conformed to the Spirit and God is molding you in His ways, teaching you to follow His voice, where just like Jesus, you only do the things you see the Father doing. Just like Jesus, you only speak the words that you hear of the Father. Okay, that's awesome. But that's a free flow, because Jesus also said too that um, those who are led by the Spirit are like the wind. Okay, well, you know, you tell me if you know where the wind's going. You tell me if you can control the wind. You can see the effects of the wind, but you can't control the wind. So, Jesus set forward the standard. And there's not a religion in the world that can live up to that standard. Because there's not a religion in the world that can relinquish the control it has on people and continue to be a sustainable, viable religion. Hello. (laughs) Because in order to build the institution, you need to have consistency. You need to have forward planning. In order to be able to build the institution, you need to be able to know what you can count, know what you can measure. God just sends us. God just instructs us, and we flow in that moment with Him. And it's an honest place of a free flow in the Spirit. You know in yourself if you've got a hidden agenda or not. You know in yourself if you've got something else going on in your heart and the things that you do and the place that you're coming from. Those with a seared conscience are the ones that lie to themselves and 
have their own personal agenda, but you want to call it God. <laughs> it's <laughs> doing this for the Lord, but you got to be on that stage, don't you? Because you need people to call you brother, pastor, reverend. Your popeness. Yeah, no, if, if you need that, then you're missing something. You know, if you need the title, if you need the position, then, you know, you're missing something. Because, I mean, even look at the way that God set up his own son coming into the earth. Jesus Christ, God himself, coming into the earth. Came in, just simple, humble. In a manger, a feeding, a feeding trough is where they put him to make him as comfortable as possible because there was no room for them in the inn. So, that being the case, and that being the representation of our Lord and our Savior, are we. What position do we need? What position do we must we have in order to be okay, in order to be satisfied? So what position do you need? And if you need something, if you need that position, that approval of man, that place, that stage, that microphone, it will become a snare to you. The other thing too is that so often if that's what your motivation is and that's where you're coming from then you're going to be empty because once you have it and there's no life and no substance in it you're going to be empty in the process a lot of people struggle with that because you know <laughs> I was reading a book of quotes a long time ago and I remember this one from it and one of them, the quotes went like, and I don't know who to attribute this one to, but it said it's it's a sad thing to to, to uh, spend your entire life working to achieve something you find out you never really wanted. And another one along those same lines was, um, it's it's a it's a sad thing for a person to climb to the top of the ladder only to find out that it was leaning against the wrong building. You know, it's it's just so often with the things that people focus their time, their energy, their effort on, their, their, all of that, they find out that it's meaningless, worthless, useless, no value, no merit, no nothing in it. And by the time you're done and you finish and you come to the end, like Solomon, you'll say meaningless, meaningless. It's all meaningless if you can if if you can stand up away from the bottle for a little bit and a drunken stupor, or switch off the TV that dulls the brain, or being honest about or the drugs or whatever it is, or whatever thing that people need to do to get their fix to not deal with the reality of what can happen in this space. Because of all these things that we just let seed into our lives to create a false paradigm, a false delusion, a false construct. We need a Savior. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Yeshua, our God's salvation. Thank God for God's salvation. In that place, in that salvation, we have freedom, we have redemption, we have purpose, we have reason for being, we have life, we have truth, and we walk in that life and truth. Thank God for that. You and I are in the midst of an incredible experience here, in this life, in this paradigm. There's a lot of things that are going on, and this is this is the, if you would, taking a commercial example, the Super Bowl <laughs> of the spiritual world of what's what we're in the middle of right now, here in this place. God is accomplishing His purpose. 
There's a lot of other stuff going on. So we need to be diligent. We need to be in prayer. We need to, listen, don't, that, don't take things that personal. There's a lot of stuff here that's going on that's just a manifestation of the spiritual reality that we're in the midst of. And you know what? Even a lot of the attacks of the enemy, they're just because you're who you are in Christ and it's more about God than you. Because so often people, they, they put all these, they get so upset, but listen, it's because the devil can't get to God, he goes after you, okay? Because God is beyond his reach. And so because God is beyond his reach, well, you know, he's been cast, the enemy's been cast down. Well, look what's here. You and I, we're in this space. So the enemy comes after us. But God's put us in this space because it serves also his purpose. Because he's also glorified in us. God's glorified in us overcoming. And He wants you to be an overcomer. He wants you to walk in that truth. He wants you to know His presence, His power, His His redemption. He wants you to know that though you can be completely in the natural, outmatched, outgunned, that He can make a way for you where there seems to be no way. That He can lead you and guide you and He can carry you through and bring you out and set your feet on solid ground and you can testify that yes, your God is the real God. Your God is the one that saves. This is a living, this is a living paradigm and living construct. We, we serve the God of the living, not the dead. This is not a religion. This is a way of life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. It's a way of life that we live. We live in consummation with the Spirit of God. We live in concert with the instructions, the plan, the purpose of God Most High. We do not walk in death. We do not walk in delusion. We do not walk in the illusion of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. There's a huge difference. One of the differences is anything in the world, if God tells you to walk away from it, you walk away from it because you've already left it in your heart. There's nothing for you to turn back and look upon and long after because you've already left it in your heart. You already died in Christ Jesus on the cross and the life you now live is in the resurrection life of Christ in you, the hope of glory. So there is nothing left in this world. All of that was put to death in Christ. And if there's a place that needs to still be dealt with, great. Deal with it and bring it before God. Let Him finish that work in you because He that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Let Him do that in you. And hold nothing in your heart. Just Him. Just pursuit of Him. Let Him be all flow in the Spirit. Flow in the things of God. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you bless them this day. I pray for every one of them that's discouraged. I pray that you encourage them in the life and the truth that is theirs in Christ Jesus. I pray that you would bless all of us with the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the power in Jesus Christ and in your Holy Spirit to act upon the things that you show us and the things that you lead and direct us to do and show and know and understand. Father, I pray that all of them would live a blessed and fulfilled life. I pray that there would be just encouragement and jubilation in all that they see coming to pass because they see your hand at work in and through them. They see your hand moving and you having your will and plan and purpose in them. And I pray that that would bring joy to their hearts. And Lord, all these other things that are there, any other any other desires that, they, that they've put before you and relinquished, Lord, you also have your own way of just, you've got a sense of humor in all of that, Father. And Lord, you know the desires of people's hearts. 
but I pray that all of our hearts would, your heart desire would be you. And so, Lord, we just leave all before you and we trust you. I pray blessing, health, peace, and, Lord God, the communion of your Holy Spirit for all of us at every moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Drop us an email. Faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. We always love to hear from you. God bless you. 20 on 20 is coming very, very soon. So um, just uh, keep us all in prayer and get ready to pray. And we just thank God for all that he's doing because his will is, is being accomplished in all of this. All right. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.